Okay, I promised I would collate some of your questions and comments over the last six months um, in the uh, comments section that, that you've uh, left on all the videos over the last six months. And I just picked out um, a few that were interesting to me. Some of them are questions that were asked more than once. Some are just questions I'd like to answer here. And others were just a little goofy. Um, so let's just kind of go over them one by one. These are in no particular order. We'll just start at the top. First of all, first up is Josh Struck. He says, you're one of the few people who do YouTube uh, thumbnails right. Well, you know, I try. Um, the one thing I don't like doing is creating clickbait thumbnails. A lot of people out there do that, uh, especially in the car genre. You know, oh no, look what I did. Um, check out what's in my garage. Oh no, did I just buy this or not? I mean, it's just, it's totally ridiculous. It's all it is is clickbait. And, um, and for those channels that do that, I just unsubscribe. I don't watch them anymore. Um, so I try not to do that. I try to label the uh, thumbnails as best I can that are accurate to what's actually in the video. Um, Bernie Panettis, I'm also in the market for an E46M. What do you think of Enthusiast Auto Group in Ohio? I've been looking at them for some time now. I have read the good and the not so good about them on the forum since you're around there. I'm sure you're looking at them when you're in the market. Um, actually, I was looking at them. Um, didn't actually talk to them. I have been down there, but mostly just to browse their inventory. Um, before I bought the M3, I was looking at, oh, a half dozen M3s they had down there. You know, most were in the 60 to 70,000 mile range for the ones that really were in my price range. None of them were Laguna Seca Blue, none of, them, none of them were Phoenix Yellow, so that pretty much ruled those out. They're all manuals, so if you like a manual, they're always going to have a manual. Um, they're usually going to have low mileage cars. A lot of them are lower than that, but they're also going to be priced at a premium. And they also service cars, so, you know, they go out and find cars that are probably undervalued in the market. Um, and then they snap them up, they do a little service to them, they resell them and make a profit on them. And I think some of the animosity on the forums is for them doing just that. There are a lot of cars out there that people have been swapping back and forth and selling to one another, and they put it on Auto Trader for X amount of dollars, and then EAG ends up buying it. They, you know, they do a couple of magic tricks to it, not a whole lot, but then they add 20% to it and sell it there. And, you know, I think what they're doing is, you know, I'm a capitalist. They're certainly welcome to do that. I don't begrudge them for making a profit. And, you know, they're smart enough to buy low and sell high. Uh, but at the same time, I think some of the enthusiasts in the M3 community um, I just get a little upset when they seem to, like, hoard all the really nice cars, and then they seem to inflate the price um, all the nice uh, low mileage cars. But they didn't have a Phoenix Yellow um, until right when I was about to get this. They had a an 04 with like 35,000 miles on it. So one year older and twice the mileage as this. It was a, a manual, of course, but they wanted like 40,000 for it, something like that. So it really ended up, you know, for me, it was like, is a manual transmission worth a twelve dollars to $15,000 premium? Not to me. Not to me. Um, for somebody out there, probably, but not for me. I can do a lot more with that money. Um, so I ended up finding this one, right price. Um, if I wanted to wait for another manual at my price, I'd probably wait another 10 years to find it because it was hard enough to find this one. So, you know, your mileage will vary. Um, I, you know, a lot of people have bought cars there and have been very happy. So, you know, if you see something you like, give them a call. Um, Ali Imran, Super Sprint Exhaust would be perfect if you, if you can find one. It isn't going to cost an arm and a leg. Um, yeah, that's kind of the crutch, isn't it? I uh, love the Phoenix Shell. Uh, also, kind of in the same vein, a seal, Al Nessary, scores of exhaust, you won't regret it. I've also heard Eisenman out there. Yeah, I mean, Super Sprint. Well, first of all, I'm probably not going to do anything with the exhaust this year. I'm probably going to put it off till next year. i got too many other things going on. Just knickknacks and stuff on these cars. I've been trying to sort out this year. They've been taking longer than I was hoping. Um, so it's probably a next year thing. I've, I've got other 
business things I need to spend my money on, um, the type of expenditures you can you know, use as a tax write-off. Uh, you can d d deduct them on your taxes at the end of the year. So it makes more sense to spend my money there for now. But Super Sprint probably won't go that route. Uh, even if I do get an aftermarket exhaust, just I don't want to spend that much money. And quite honestly, I don't really think I want the car to be that loud anyways. Um, the Remus on the Cayman, at times it's even a little loud for me. Um, it's, it sounds great, don't get me wrong, but uh, there are times when I just, I'm in traffic, I just want to get home, I'm, you know, I got a headache or whatnot. It'd be nice to feel it a little bit quieter sometimes. And obviously with Super Sprints, you can, at least a lot of them, you can turn them on and off, flip the little switch on them, but I don't want to spend that much money. So I'll address this sometime next year. Um, history repeats itself. Why not a manual swap? That's probably the most asked question I get. Um, and the simplest answer is no need. There's no need. I, I, the SMG doesn't bother me. It's fine, especially with the Frank Smith tune. There's nothing wrong with it. And I, I've driven an E46 M3 manual, and they're, they're really good. And like I said, all things being equal, I would like to have a manual in it. But with the Cayman, it's not as good as the Cayman train. Nothing I have ever driven is as good as that car, never mind the transmission. So for me, the SMG is a great compromise. It's a great change of pace. And on a car this low mileage, you know, it's fine. Why, why try to fix a problem that's not there? So the SMG is staying, you know, maybe sometime in the future, if it goes tits up, we'll think about replacing it. But, you know, the car will probably outlive me. Um, Adam Blacknovsky, just say, okay, this is in response to um, the video of why I don't track my car. Just say you're not that great of a driver. It would save everyone a lot of time. Well, Adam, you figured it all out on your own. Uh, Kippy P. I own an E46 M32 with relatively low miles, 05 coupe carbon black. That's a good color. Um, when I bought it, it had 33. Okay. Uh, just curious, did you do the airbag recall? Uh, apparently, some of our cars are on or off the list from Takata. Yeah, I did. I've done, well, I've sort of done it. I've done the um, passenger side airbag recall, took it to the BMW dealer. They had the passenger ones, I guess, lying around, so they could do that one right away. Wasn't that big of a deal. Took it in in the morning, picked it up in the afternoon. Didn't even know, even know they had done anything. It was whatever they did to the, to the um, dash and stuff to put the, take the old one out, put the new one in. It, it, it looked great. Um, but the driver's side, uh, they're still waiting on those. From what they told me, it could be several months before they get them. Obviously, the Takata airbag recall affects millions of cars, not just BMW. So... Um, they're way behind production from what I've been hearing, and they're actually, Takata's actually going out and trying to get third parties to sort of produce these things too so they can catch up. So BMW said it could be several months before I hear anything. I went to the BMW USA site and they had something you could fill out, and like you'll get an email when these driver's side airbags are ready and the dealer will send you an automated email or something, but I'm not expecting to get that anytime soon. Um, Stephanie Austin, uh, just drive the fucking thing. And I get that a lot too. We're working on it. We're working on it. Um, Fam Vlogs says, I'm curious on buying a Cayman S2008. Would you recommend as a daily driver and what price point? And then UCSF Teeth responds to that. I highly recommend it. Thanks to the influence of Chris World TV and Everyday Driver. That's a good channel, by the way. If, you, if you're not following that, I would recommend you do. Uh, I just purchased an 08 Cayman S, had it for a month. La, 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 la. Okay, yeah. Uh, Cayman S is a great daily driver. The only ugly in that scenario is, if you're looking at the good, bad, and the ugly of a Cayman S, is it's a two-seater. Um, so you can only take one other person. With, now, depending on what kind of family you have, maybe that's a bonus. I don't know. So you can only take one person. But yeah, I mean, that's really the only downside to a Cayman. As far as space in the car, it's really got quite a bit of space. You got the front trunk, which is really deep, and you can put a bunch of soft luggage in that. The, the back trunk, not quite as deep, but it's wide, so you can get other stuff in that. Um, so it's great if you want to take weekend trips and stuff, long weekends, two people, not a problem whatsoever. It is the best car I have ever owned, hands down, and it's not, it's not even close. It's just, uh, it's just so fun to drive. It's, you know, they say it's, better, it's more fun to drive a, a slow car fast than a fast car slow, and I think that holds true with the Cayman in a lot of ways. It's plenty fast to get you in all kinds of trouble, but it's not so fast you're just going to be 
stupid and reckless with it. It makes you a better driver. It's so fun to drive. It's easy to drive. It's comfortable. It's got all the creature comforts you could possibly want. The, the transmission in it is the, the manual, anyways, is unbelievable. Best manual train I've ever driven. Um, and the handling of it. Now, on a straight line, the M3, it might be a little quicker, especially with the SMG tranny. You know, you can pop through the gears quicker. But in curves, even though I haven't driven this car nearly as much because I drive the Cayman every day, it's really it's not even close as far as um, being able to handle and the twisties and stuff like that. The Cayman will just, it'll, take off and leave this car behind. It's you know mid-engine, it's, it's smaller, it's lower, it's less weight. Um, you know, you can find first gen Cayman S's 25 to 35,000, depending on how nice they are, what the options are, mileage, condition, all that stuff. So, you know, just look around. The prices are coming down. They, they built quite a few of them, so um, there's a bunch out there that you can kind of just shop. You don't have to uh, uh, wait till somebody's ready to sell one. Uh, they're always out there for sale, so uh, just find one you like and uh, go test drive it and see if you like it. Uh, let's see. What's the next one here? Um, rusted blades. Okay, this is in response to um, the Orlando uh, video that I made. Rusted blade says, false flag made, and even so, you can't take your concealed carry in a nightclub and get hammered before showing the lads how man pint glasses you can shoot with one bullet. Okay, first of all, didn't say anything about the patrons taking a firearm um, into an establishment where they're serving alcohol because in most places you can't do that, but certainly the owner of the establishment should be armed and the employees should certainly be armed. They're not the ones that are drinking, so if they're packing, they should be able to handle a problem. Uh, and along, along the same lines, 108 Morris 108 says, I got news for you. There's no such thing as Islamic terrorism. Some people would disagree with that. 9-11 uh, and all the rest are CIA orchestrated false flag events. Oh, shit, here we go with that. Uh, there's an abundant proof demonstrating the myth of Islamic terror, however, and if you're of the yoke who can seek to maintain the current status quo mainstream media bullshit and the elitist agenda, then no amount of convincing is going to work. What surprises me is you seem to have missed the countless investigations by real journalists showing 9-11 was an inside job. Okay, first of all, what does 9-11 have to do with the Orlando shootings? I mean, if dog, rabbit. Two completely different things. Second of all, you must have an unbelievably high opinion of government, far higher than me, to believe they are smart enough and astute enough to be able to pull off a sham like 9-11 and actually keep it under wraps. I got news for you. Government ain't that smart, okay? They are not that talented. These people are far stupider than you give them credit for. Um, it's kind of like the people who think we faked the moon landing, okay? It's far easier to just go land on the freaking moon than actually fake a moon landing and get away with it for 50 years. Um, people talk, things get out in the open. It's pretty much impossible. So no, I don't uh, think it's a false flag operation. I don't believe in the Loch Ness Monster. I don't believe in the theory of Atlantis. Usually the simplest answer is the right answer. Uh, let's see, uh, Chinway Taboy. Uh, just do the clear bra for the entire front end of the M3. The OEM wheels look better. Um, I think I am going to do the entire front end. Um, I'm going to wait about 30 days or so for the paint to cure on all the uh, repaint stuff they've done on the, the scratches and stuff, but right now, the, uh, the bra ends about right here, and the only part that's left on the car is basically on the fender on the hood. And I'm going to end up doing everything all the way to the end of the front quarter panels, obviously all the hood. And then I'll do the mirrors as well, and also the headlights. But, you know, it's like seven or $800 to do half of it up front. So for another 500 bucks, I guess, you know, while they're farting around with it, it just makes sense to do the whole thing, get it done, give it over, get it over with, like I say, do it once, do it right. They don't have to worry about it anymore. I mean, the, the paint on the front is going to be perfect when it goes on, and then it's going to stay perfect. It's, it's a lot cheaper to take that stuff off and put it back on and repaint the whole front of your car. So it's on my to-do list. I just need to wait a few weeks for the paint to really completely cure and, and dry um, before I start putting stuff on the top. As far as the OEM wheels, um, I like the wheels that are on there. And speaking of that, uh, 
G4R377 says, what are the wheels, replica wheels on your car, and are they on spacers too? No spacers, they're 19-inch avant-garde M359s. Uh, I think they're uh, 245-35s in the front, that's with a tire, and 275-30s in, in the rear. I, I've got... Um, Michelin um, Pilot Super Sports on, which are great tires. I got the same tires that are on the Cayman. I need to replace the ones on the Cayman, but um, really good tires, but they're really expensive and they don't last very long. 18 to 20,000 miles is pretty much as far as you can get before they're shot. Um, and that's not, you know, driving crazy either. Um, but I really like the wheels. I mean, you know, let's preface all this by saying, the avant-garde's are not, you know, they're not forge lines, they're not HREs, they're certainly not as nice as my Le Mans DBS rims on, on the 911 Turbo. And so I don't pretend that they are, but uh, for the price, they look really good, they're sort of period correct, they look kind of like the CSL rims. Um, and it's the exact look I was looking for, I wonder black rims, so for me, they're perfect. I'm not doing any high performance driving schools or taking it to the track or anything, so they'll probably last as long as the car. Uh, Stephen Smith says, have you tried, or have you uh, had the subframe checked? Uh, lovely car, had two of them now, bit of a pocket burner, but fantastic car for the money. Yeah, when I had the car in um, for the uh, Takata airbag recall, um, I had him look at the subframe, and it's perfect. It should be perfect for 18,000 miles, but, you know, it's worth checking anyway. So, you know, some say, well, go ahead and do the reinforcement stuff, even though it's perfect. Or, you know, like I said... I, this car does not get driven that hard in order to, you know, take the wear and tear and abuse that a lot of the other ones out there have. So it's just not something I'm really worrying about. If it pops up, you know, I'll address it, you know, when it happens. But until then, I'm not really worried about it. Um, let's see. Uh, one more here. Uh, Nick Sutcliffe. I got an 04 WRX STI. Uh, I want an E46 M3. Uh, what's the car like compared since you owned a WRX. You probably saw my WRX uh, video buying story that I posted, I don't know, a month or two ago. Um, that was a great car. I really liked it. It was an 02, um, World Rally Blue. It was the first year that they brought the WRX here. Um, I, I ordered it in advance. It was on a lease, so I was one of the first to get one in the country and had a lot of fun with that. I had it for three and a half years, bought it at the end of the lease, and then flipped it for like three grand a week later because the residual value on that was so good. Um, but compared to the M3, um, kind of apples and oranges here because I think the WRX only had like 225 horses. This has 333, so that's a big difference. Now the, the STI I think had, had 300 at the time, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the STI I think came out in 03 or 04. Because when I, when I ordered the, S, the uh, WRX, I asked them when the STIs were coming and I, I think the wait was too long. I, I didn't want to wait any longer, so I ordered the WRX. But the STI is probably a more fair comparison that you have. Uh, but still, you know, different cars, though. I mean, four-door, two-door, all-wheel drive, two-wheel drive. You know, the, the STI, you know, it's, they're building Foresters and Legacies and stuff on the same assembly line. So it's still got some of that Subaru build quality on the inside of it, which is it's good build quality. I never had any maintenance problems on that car. Ran perfect. Uh, but it's not the same level of engineering and fit and finish as the M3. I mean, on the inside, the M3 is, you know, it's upscale. Um, now, obviously, the newer STIs and Subarus and stuff, they, you know, they started to put leather in it and all this stuff. They, they got heavier. I really don't like the new... Subaru WRXs and the STIs. They look like giant Camrys to me now. I preferred the odd, rally, bug-eyed look of the old cars, especially the five-door wagons. Um, those were the ones that really appealed to me, and that's why I got the car. But um, I think you'll like an M3. I think uh, from a performance standpoint, they're probably not too far off from one another. Obviously, in winter, you're going to do much better with a, with a uh, STI because you can drive it all year, year round and not have a problem with it. Um, but I think the driving dynamics are going to be better with the M3. Now, the one thing that they do share, at least with my WRX was, and this is one of the things I don't like about either car, is first gear was completely ornamental. At least I think it is in the M3, and also I know it was in my WRX. I mean, 
you can be you can be at a stoplight and turn left through an intersection without having to get into another gear. Um, you couldn't stay in first gear because it was so short. Um, and uh, the uh, the clutch on the uh, on my WRX wasn't the greatest either. It was um, it, it just it, it wasn't very strong. But you know you put those things aside. Both cars are really good. You just have to go out and drive drive an M3. See if you like it. Uh, you know they they're totally bottomed out pretty much in the market. They depreciated fully. So if you pick a good one up at a good price, you get one for a song. Uh, it'll probably hold your you know you'll you'll keep your money. It, you know the only cost you'll you'll have are recurring maintenance costs and stuff like that. As long as you, you know, get a good one at the beginning, it shouldn't be that bad. Um, so, you know, give it a try. See what you like. Um, you know, the cars are, and I tell this to everybody, it doesn't matter how many cars you recommend to people and what other people drive and what you drive. It's like a pair of tennis shoes. Everybody has different tastes and what works for one person is not going to work for somebody else. Um, you know, if you've got a family or something, the M3 might not be good for you. It's two doors, it's hard to get in the back seat. You might want four doors. So, you know, it might, you might be better off looking at um, a later model four door M car. So it's just, you know, it depends on what your situation is and what your lifestyle is and obviously what your budget is. So those are just some of the questions that I wanted to answer. Um, comments to your questions and comments. And if you have any comments about my questions and comments to your questions and comments, um, put them in the uh, comment section below this video and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Like I said, some of these questions have been asked multiple times over the last six months and I try to answer them um, uh, in the video comment section, but the same question was getting answered in different videos and some people were missing out, so I just thought, okay, it'd be a better idea to just answer them all here. And I should have been doing this really probably earlier than now. So I'll try to do it every four or six weeks or something like that um, as the questions build up and I think they deserve answering. So. Um, that's on my to-do list as well. So that's that. Um, what's upcoming is I'm working on my uh, buying versus leasing video. Um, I'm trying to get the M3 outside again and just a couple other knickknacks I'm working on. So uh, just stay tuned for those. Uh, if you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, don't like it. Uh, share this video if you uh, got any buddies out there on YouTube, share it with them. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at ChrisWorldTV. And uh, subscribe today so you never miss an episode.